The final topic we now have at hand is the Ant-Man and the Wasp spoiler cast. Uh, yeah, spoilers alert. I am alert. hypothetically here. <laughs> hypothetically. Uh, yeah, the UK gets it a month late. <laughs> terrible, yeah. just terrible. Oh. I mean, to be fair, they, you know, we don't get the, this movie now because the World Cup, the, and we're doing quite the, good. So, the, yeah. The, like, don't you also get like Infinity War, uh, physically, like in September? Yeah. Yeah, but we always get home releases late. Uh, That's okay. true. Um, so, and every TV show we get late. So. Yeah, much late. That's terrible marketing by them. It's like we're how still, the... we still haven't finished the season of Shield. Oh my god. <laughs> It's crazy. And we've only just finished Runaways. So. And see how that happens, folks. So if you're from the UK or somewhere that hasn't gotten a movie, you might want to stay away from this topic and discussion. So let's get into Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, a lot of stuff happens in this movie. Uh, and that's not to say it's not a movie that takes itself 100% seriously, because this is... It's it's like it's like the last one. It's, it's a sort, still sort of a, a, a heist movie, but... Yep. Have, you have a, like a lot of laughs along the way. Because, oh like yeah. You said it, it doesn't take itself that seriously. Honestly, I laughed at this movie more than most comedies I've seen this year. So, so yeah, it's like, Baba Yaga. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's I the, the, just the character moments and what really gets me is every character that you loved. Like you were, you think in this movie, they're like, oh man, Louise was so loved by everybody. They're going to put him too much in the movie and he's going to get boring. And they do just enough so you want yeah. more, but they don't give you too much. It's literally yeah. smart how they handle it. Yeah, it's like Lewis was um, put in the movie just enough that everyone got their fill of Lewis with the laughs. And yep. they added a little bit more extra with that one uh, bit of the scene where he was talking with, uh, with, uh, with Wasp saying mm -hmm. that, I, I think I will want a super suit too. Yep. With min minimal powers. <laughs> Or even no powers at all. Just a suit. See, I kind of... I don't really want to be down on it, but I don't, they did not need those guys in this movie at all. See, they didn't. And I agree with that. But if you would have cut them out, I think it would have felt like more of an empty movie, right? Like, if that makes sense. It, 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 I, I don't know. It, it, it feel like, you know, that Scott... Didn't have didn't have his friends around him anymore. Yeah, if that made if that made sense. Because I feel yes. like Scott bonded with those uh, ex convicts while while he was locked up, and he'd have them around him because they were buds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like it's just like I don't know. It's, it's the way the movie was written. Like you didn't really need Scott either. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, that's you know, I mean, Scott, I, I know, I know, because like, yeah, like, it, it, it was played. Up, yeah, yeah, it was played up. It was played up that Scott was just convenient. It yep. wasn't really his movie. I mean, like, he had that one legitimate reason because they needed him for Janet. Yeah. But outside of that, right. Hope could have done literally I mean, everything by Just him. being real, this movie realistically should have just been called The Wasp, like yeah. featuring yeah. Ant Man, because it is yeah. her movie. And that's kind of the interesting thing in this because everybody walked away going, well, Paul Rudd and the rest of the movie was good, but man, Wasp. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, she was the show stealer here, without doubt. No one's going to argue against that. And there's a lot of elements that, in this movie, I think, were conveniently placed just to give everybody a thing to do. Like, hey, we're ex-cons. Like, we knew what that was going to be. We talked about that the moment we saw that first set photo that said ex-con. Yep. Where, like, oh, these characters are here for one reason only, because they have to be. And you can see that the setup for the third movie, if there's a third movie, is, you know... Oh, there's going to be a third movie. They're not going to leave it as it is. Exactly. It's there's like no way. Those three are going to be more integrated into it, which I'm okay with. I like their characters. You know, I like what they're doing, and it, they give me laughs, which I, I like that. I like laughing at yeah, a movie. Yeah. So <laughs> I think, like, because my initial thing watching this is it's a very strange movie. Mm -hmm. It's very oddly made. It abruptly starts. It abruptly ends. And I don't think it's long enough. It it, it feels like a, a Bridger movie, or like what was happening like after Civil War, and then it goes, it does its thing, and then it goes into uh, the end, of, and it goes through till to th till to the end of Infinity War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just quickly, the dank one in the chat, it's not going to be Stinger. We do not mention that name. She's going to be <laughs> Stature. 
<laughs> yeah, yep. Do, I mean, S- Stinger was the worst thing Nick Spencer's ever written. If you say otherwise, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, Statue through and through. I, mean, like, I, I can't believe Marvel, Marvel has done this. First, they gave us a talking tree and a, and a talking raccoon, and then they made them made uh, us believe that an ant could get to the size of a dog and learn how to play the drums. <laughs> they showed that in the trailer yep. and I was like oh <laughs> like, you did a Sony why yeah why? yeah like um, I, re- I like originally I was wondering when or like when he was gonna do the drums like the the full set and it is at the end I'm like oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, like, I think for the most part I really enjoyed it I kind of needed 20 extra minutes yeah because like you know with the way the movie is you cut out Louise and that stuff. Just give me more Janet, because we got nothing with Janet. She did. She touched Ghost, and that was it. It's just like, oh, I wanted Janet, but right. I mean, she has microverse powers now. Yeah, but like, how how does that work? They don't explain anything. Yeah, well, she did. Don't. She said even she doesn't know. Yeah, but like, you could have at least spent another ten minutes with her character. You know, she literally comes out and the movie ends. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, we spent I mean, she, like five, ten minutes take over with Scott's the X-Cons. body. Yeah, but we spent like five, ten minutes with the X Cons, who did nothing. Mm-hmm. And then there's Janet, who has something to do, and she doesn't get anything. Like, it's either needed 20 more minutes or cut them out. Because let's face it, Luis was only there to tell the same joke from the first one again. Yep, because people loved it. That's the thing. Um, It felt like. Yeah, we did, yeah. So, as much as I love the movie, right, and I really do, but it felt more of a, hey, it's Ant-Man 2.0 than yeah. any other movie. Like, the Thor movies have a distinct evolution. The Iron Mans do. The Captain America, certainly, each one is more different than any other one. The Avengers do. This was the most basic follow-up that you could possibly do with the safest repeat of the first movie. Like, it wasn't that next step. It was just like, hey, it's more of what you love because we're surprised anybody loved the first one. You know, like, mm. and I, I agree with a lot of complaints that people have said that. And I'm like, you know what? I, that's what I said, too. It's like, that's that's what it felt like, you know? <laughs> well, I, I, I thought that that's what the what they were going for if, potential, if potentially in the next Avengers we get a more serious side to Scott in dealing with what happened after Infinity War. Mm. I mean, I we're gonna get a, a different side of Scott. I think I don't know if it's gonna be if we could say it's gonna be serious, but I don't think this character has the potential to be serious. I don't think that's in his nature. But yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, he can be, but I'm not like he's gonna be like serious like all the time. So he, he's not gonna get like a Captain America level of serious. Yeah. He's gonna still be. Yeah, he'd be more, probably more focused. Might be a better word. Hmm. For Scott, but I don't know. I, like, I really enjoyed the movie. It's just there's there's a lot of problems with it, and like the whole like yes, it being like a day or three days in the life of Scott, however long it is. Like it's it's fine. It works. Like the characters I'd say are stronger than the first one. Like they nail Hank Pym in this. And they kind of give him his own Ultron in a way. Mm. With Ghost, it's like, oh look, your work's coming back. You like you, you done goofed. Like that, they nailed absolutely nailed that part. Like they nailed Hope, Janet for what we saw of her in the thirty seconds she was there is great. <laughs> like, the fact that they didn't give us a villain, and like I'm thankful for that. Like why even try follow Thanos? Yep. I mean, like, I mean, if you, put it, if you put it basically, Hank was the villain again. He, he, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you know, we we saw like Hank actually got something to do in this movie. Thank God. Yeah. Even if he was just sitting in a chair and look at green screen, but he did green screen look good. But like, it's just, I don't know, it's just the way it was. They, they they did something weird with it, and it's it's kind of it took me out. It was just yeah. like, Ugh, I don't like how you did that. Go stuff. Like I said, I'm fifty fifty on it because I really like it, but it is a more basic follow up, and there is a issues i do have with it with how some of the elements were handled like you know some of the comedy i thought some of the stuff with the ant eh, yeah. like 
Okay, that's going to be, I guess, wait, a running you, gag. Wait, you don't like Ulysses S. Grant? <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Banderas. Oh. <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, like the the humor in it was just as funny as the first one. To me. Yeah. But and, I, I think the first one was far better made. I agree with that. And here's something else that I had a big problem with. You remember in the first Ant-Man, when he would shrink down, they would make the scene almost like a spectacle. Like, when he's in that, like, party and down the sink, you know, and, like, in the bathtub. It had this scale where everything was grandiose and it looked it looked like they were conveying. It's like, hey, look, he's small, but everything is big. That's, that's the movie, right? In hmm. this, I never had that one scene where I felt that sense of scale and intensity and I came being tossed around and kicked around. They, they play around with it like when she's running on the knives and throwing stuff, but I never felt like I really got down to that ground level and they kind of let me live in a smaller world like I did in the first one. And maybe that was their intention because like, oh, you had that in the first one, but that's one of my favorite elements of the first movie because it truly felt like there was a sense of scale. And mm. I don't know if that was... I think was... it's just because of how, like, hectic the plot was. Yeah, I, like, I think no, that not is. not hectic in like, a bad way. Like, you know, they were, they're in a rush. They've yeah. only got a certain amount of time to get this done. Like, I think it's just, you know, you can't really get settled into anywhere. But I think, like, in most movies, that would work against it. I think for this one, it kind of works for it. Mm -hmm. Like, I get what you're saying. Like, you know, like, let us be in, like, not the microverse, but, like, the tiny land yeah. where everything's huge. Yeah. But, it, I know. I thought that was the only part that really kind of grinds on me, and like, I, I'm still one of the people that actually liked Yellow Jacket. So I thought Ghost was a good, different type of quote unquote yeah. villain. You know, and I'm like, yeah, Yellow Jacket was bare bones, and you know, the actor did what he needed to, and now we have a different type of villain that's not really doing it for anything, but it's the pain she has, and. They mm -hmm. say she's been around for a while, so I'm like, that's cool. And she clearly, she survived. She's around now. So I'm like, so there's, the intent the character is going to come back, right? And, oh, yeah. And, like, yeah. And didn't the director say that Hill Jacket may still be around? Yeah, yeah. he said he last think he's alive still. Which, to be fair, I never got the impression that he died. Mm. It's like, everything's just shrinking. Why would, like, we've seen them shrink the entire movie. Yeah. Well, I just think he's dead. But, but no, Ghost is definitely going to come back. You know, the whole post credit scene is like, oh, we need to get more quantum energy for Ghost to help her out. Da, 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 da. Yep. Yeah, so... So maybe Thunderbolts? Maybe. That's the maybe. prevailing theory. I don't know. <laughs> also, shout out, her dad was Egghead. So well done, Derrickson. <laughs> yeah. oh, not, not Derrickson. What is his name? Reed. Yeah. So Peyton Reed, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Scott Derrickson literally <laughs> stepped in and was like, they won't so... let me do Doctor Strange 2 yet. Put <laughs> so, so do you guys think... Uh, this guy's going to use the quantum energy to help open a, a time portal. Yeah. Since he's stuck yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. We know he's time traveling. So that's clearly how. You know, it makes sense why they've cast an older Cassie Lang as well. Yep. So that's why he's going to be in there. And that's why Stark looks kind of older, I, I assume, in with the shield badge on his, in the set pictures. Mm hmm. But he goes in that timeline, sees his daughter, gets Stark, goes back. And then we see you, then we get a heist. Man, get all the other stuff. Why does it seem like Ant Man is going to be a pretty big focal point of Avengers 4? <laughs> because they couldn't have all the original Avengers in the first movie. So they're going to fix that with time mumbo jumbo now and uh -huh. give us the founder statue. Oh, <laughs> oh, instead, instead of, I, I instead of standing Hank, by that statue, I was never. Instead of, yeah, instead of Hank and Janet, is going to be of Scott it's and Hope. Hope. Yeah. Oh, can't yeah, no no uh, uh, that's it release has happened <laughs> dude it's gonna be so <laughs> epic it, dude what if the credits of uh you know avengers 4 are just like age of ultron with a statue but it is the oh my god actual founders uh, can't handle that'd be too <laughs> epic too epic i tell you it's just the one thing they need it's like just how can we just have this statue? they rewrite history and hank pym at the post credit scene is sitting down and he's like Boy, you know what we need? A big old AI based on my brain algorithm. <laughs> Give us a proper Ultron finally so people can shut up. Oh, uh, I mean, technically they could then. Because they would wipe out Age of Ultron. Hmm. 
I mean, it depends how they handle it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they change but, all like, history. You could, you could do that thing where, like, Ultron starts talking to Hank, and then Hank does it that way. Ooh. Yeah. You know, give Hank Pym something more to do in the third one, because I need a Hank and Janet at least half movie. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, look at that de-aging technology. Remember the first time they used it? In, like, Civil War was really where they pushed it. I mean, it cost close to, I think they said, five to eight million dollars to do a minute and a half of Robert Downey Jr. Mm. Now they're using it more, and it looks like they're going to be using it more and more. And I mean, Disney, when they first started using that in Toronto Legacy, it looked it looked like episode two and like the prequels. Like I... It was... Oof. It was rough. I, rem I remember watching Tron Legacy and not finding it rough. Looking back at it now, it's just like, Ugh. Oh, yeah. When, it's like, oh, it's really bad. But, it's back like uh, in the day where we would have a moment where we're like, dude, look at this. Kingdom Hearts looks exactly like Pixar. Now you go back, you're like, man, yeah. I was one dumb kid. Now it's like that <laughs> type of thing. In hindsight, you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, how they're going to be handling this. But, yeah, overall, um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, I think we're all in agreement. We enjoyed it. Yeah. And it was a good yeah. movie. It was good. Yeah, another, yeah, another good movie. Um, it, it was the palate cleanser I needed for the most part until I got PTSD at the end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wasn't yeah. a great... And it, it, you knew it was going to happen anyway. Like, mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't oh, expect, I, like... Both wasps to go. Uh, but... <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was expecting like the ant to like you know turn to dust at the end, but nope, he's still going. Yeah. Well, at least you know half of them have gone because Feige said it affected animals. So. That's true. Everything in the universe that's alive was affected by it. It's like, oh, damn. <laughs> but why is it taking this long for someone to even bring that up? Like, how did no one think of that? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, does that mean all animals have gone? Yeah. 